How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at Phantom Road number two. Uh, yeah, this is a comic I didn't hear much about. Picked up issue one last month and I thought it was pretty fun. And I think, you know, when I saw issue two sitting on the shelves and I was, uh, you know, happy to see it there, I was like, okay, I, I should try to cover this comic probably issue by issue because I am having fun with it. Last time there was a trucker that came across a car wreck and him and the girl that survived the wreck found a mysterious object there which transported them to the Phantom Road. I really love this realm. I love the idea, you know, it's a, a like abandoned, super pale and bright place with these strange figures running around it. And in this issue, we meet a guy that gives a little bit of an explanation as to the road without giving too much away. And that is kind of a balance with these kind of stories. You know, getting a little bit more information but not feeling like you've ripped the band-aid off and all the mystery is gone now. So we do learn a little bit about it. We get to see a few interesting things in regard to how this world relates to the real world. And there is some interesting ideas that make me go, okay, how much is it connected and where and why would we see, like, they find a truck stop. And it's like, how did the whole truck stop get plopped down into here? And yeah, there are some interesting ideas to keep you wondering about the connection and what they have to do. Uh, their relationship with the mysterious rock is explored more. We still don't really know where it came from, but we have a little bit of a sense of a, a purpose and a, a connection with it. More on that in a little bit. Uh, if you guys want to see me talk about this book in a little bit more specifics, I'm going to switch to the close-up camera where I'll show you guys some of the story and a little bit of the art. I won't be doing any major spoilers. I just want to give you guys a little peek. Um, and while I will be avoiding the end, I will talk about a few scenes in a little bit more depth. Anyway, without further ado, to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Phantom Road number two. Let's go ahead and bring the cover to the camera. Again, a pretty simple but effective cover. A landscape with the creatures slowly approaching the truck. I love the, the atmosphere of this really pale, washed out, overexposed world. Blue of the truck, blown up into the sky, matching on the image logo. And even the, the number two in the credit byline kind of match the sand here. Interesting, interesting world. A little, uh, a little subtle, but effective. Anyway, on the back, we have the same back page of her with the glowing eyes from issue one. I was thinking that might change each time, but I'm guessing it'll be uh, uniform. And on the back, issue two, first cover and printing, $3.99, standard cover price, and I did make sure to get the A. Anyway, cracking the book open, we get to see the credits. We get the credit page from before. Jeff Lemire's the writer. Gabriel H. Walta is the artist who also did the cover. Um, I really wish this had a previous on. They're dedicating a whole page to the credits, which is good. I like that. And, you know, uh, some companies would use this as a page for an ad instead, so I do like that they allocate it to be relevant material. But I really wish they put a previously on here. I just, I always want to stress that. Um, really would have helped jog my memory. Uh, but anyway, after that we get into the story proper. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to show you guys a bit of the story, a bit of the art, and, you know, let you guys have a peek in, talk about a few scenes, but again, no major spoilers. But like last time, we're open with an out-of-context scene, a few panels from the future, and we get to see her, but that's not the pale sky. So does the world change, or is this the real world? But she still appears to be in pain, and there's her fingers dragging in the dirt. So what situation led to this context, we are left to wonder. Then we get chapter two, Through the Salt, 
and we get to see our main characters are still on the road having some conversations. They're doing a bit of a get to know you. The guy that died in the wreck was her fiance and her name is Birdie, short for Beverly. Well, they go down the road and they see a truck stop fully intact, just like the real world. So are we still in America or did somehow a copy of the truck stop come into this world? We don't know, but if you look, the creatures do not cross the line onto the parking lot. So this appears to be some sort of safe zone for them. You know, safe zone, and we gotta get out, we gotta explore, because we can't just drive till we run out of gas and have no idea where we're going, so let's investigate, even though it's kind of creepy that the monsters are staying just out of your way. There's the, the rock, and they're gonna lock it up, and they go inside the Billy Bear. The guy in the car out front is dead, though, so it didn't work out for him. But creepy abandoned truck stop. We get the nice dark contrast going in here. Everything outside is so, uh, so pale. But she's in for a shock, and this is our first clue as to uh, the relationship between this world and the real world is that she looks out the window, and out the window she can see the real world. And she runs out to check. It's still the other world. And when she looks back through the window the image is gone. So through the window, she saw a faint glimmer of the real world. How are these two connected? And how easy is it to slip between one or see one? You know, so that is the question there. But of course, they're surprised by a voice and we get another human. And he says, I can tell you some stuff, but not everything some stuff you're not ready to hear yet. So he's going to give them a, a little bit of clues, but we don't know who he is, what his game is, and we don't know everything. Yeah, classic guy that knows everything, never wants to tell you everything. What's going on here? Uh, w what's this all about? Yeah, I know, but I I'm not going to tell you everything. You know, the classic deal. Um, he does kind of do the, you know, everyone loves visual aids and sci-fi stories when something's complicated, and he lays out two rows of salt and then kind of smears them and says, two real worlds one running parallel and sometimes they collide, you know, so a good little illustration, and he does say what their mission is, and he says, you're tied to that rock, and you have to bring it to Golgotha. And so, yeah, I do like that idea. You know, it A, lays out a, a clear mission for them and puts them on an adventure. But also, I like that, you know, he's a, a truck driver. He delivers things. Here's a supernatural version of his job, you know. So I do like that they have a mission, and I do like what it is, and I think it's really cool. Um, there is more, including uh, some fun action and uh, twist and stuff, especially in a very interesting that thing that happens when she uh, leaves this uh, place. But I will say there's the staple in the middle. The staple marks about the halfway point of a comic. And I don't want to go into major spoilers. I also worry that if I were to do a spoiler review that people would watch that instead of reading the books, which is really what I do don't want to happen so I'm gonna cut you guys off at the stapler to avoid uh, spoiling but I will say fun book loved it like last time anyway to everyone who's watched so far thank you for watching to everyone who's liked and subscribed thank you you really are helping the uh, channel out I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom how about my uh, Jeff Lemire playlist you can see my reviews for the first issue of Phantom Road, but also a bunch of other fun Jeff Lemire stuff. I really like uh, Gideon Falls. I think I have the first two reviewed up there. That was really fun. Anyway, have a good day. I see, I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Jeff Lemire playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.